All right, folks, God bless you guys. Are y'all ready? Things are getting really wild. They're getting very tumultuous. Have you noticed? <laughs> there is a thing going on right now, and it's fascinating. You can see the polarization. It's like a magnet. On one side is a magnet, and I'll use James Supplanter as an example. He is making videos where he's saying, you're tempting God if you're waiting for him and looking for him. Well, the Lord told me specifically in front of witnesses to go and address his video and show him his error. I wrote him notes. I wrote him, you know, I wrote him uh, comments. He did not receive them. him. I did a video. He did not receive it. But then he did a video where he admitted he was doing, he had done it wrong. He had delivered it wrong. But then he turned the whole thing around that he did it right. And it's really him that's hearing from God. It's not Jonathan Cleck that's hearing from God. It's James the Planter, by golly. He's the one hearing from God. And you know what? All his little team is gathered like magnets are all over there. You can see the old channels like that have been around for 10 years of the same lunatics that have been doing the same thing. Jonathan Cleck hate channels. We're obsessed with Jonathan Cleck. They started a channel called Jonathan Cluck. I actually know a guy named Jonathan Cluck, by the way. And uh, I was, uh, yeah. He actually went and picked up a date of mine on on a on this big party thing on accident because he thought he was supposed to go pick up this girl named Linda Mays, and when I showed to pick up, showed to pick up Linda, I saw Linda's mom and I'm like, hey, Miss Mays, where's is Linda here? And she's like, uh, she left with Jonathan Cluck. <laughs> I was like, oh really? And she goes, yeah, there was some signals I got across. It was like this big formal party. Anyway, I was like, cool, that's cool. Anyway, but yeah, they've started a Jonathan Cluck channel. You got Gene Rebel with the one eye symbology, which is Satan. And then you got all the little serpent followers over there. And now they're all, we're all going to rally behind Gene Rebel saying that Jesus is not coming. If you say that Jesus is coming, you are tempting God. If you're waiting for him, you're tempting God. That's what he said. And I'm like, please retract that, James, please. It would be really, you know, that's very harmful to the well-being of people for you to be, you know, saying stuff like that. And it was so unclear. I was like, this is just awful that you're doing this. It's terrible. It's just really terrible. And I said, you need to change that. And the Lord, the Lord insisted that I do it. And I told Corey and Zach, I'm like, I don't want to go mess with this. Whatever. And the Lord said, you must. And so I did. And you're not going to believe all the miracles that started happening over here. I was like, ah. It's like, I can't stop all the miracles so let me share with you what's going on because this is so this is so cool while james is over there going i promise i promise you i promise it god is telling me to do this see i've been showing up for here since eh, since 2008 with supernatural information that's not refutable though the the vatican's a snake that's a supernatural revelation of exposing the serpent race. <laughs> Y'all like that, huh? Huh, girls? <laughs> the serpent race. Yeah, the twin female energy that started the host body system. That's why you see the twin female thing all the time because it's everywhere. You see it in the Adidas original commercials. Here you go, watch this. Y'all saw it in this movie, The Shining. There you go. This is probably maybe moving kind of slow. I'll just stretch them out. I'm not going to just click on them and enlarge them. So the twin female thing is in The Shining because they hunt The Shining, which is God's children. And then there's the double mint twins. And then you have the Statue of Liberty in front of the twin towers. And then you have... The Bud, the Ian Bud Light. Oh, everybody here is a twin. Then you have the Adidas commercial where, oh, wow, twin females back to back representing the top of the hindecogram. So the Lord has taught me their language and how they communicate and the, what they do and how they, how they manifest. It's really, it's truly just a manifestation of a spiritual thing. It's a twin female system that started the whole host body system. Here is Marina Abramovic, the witch of Hollywood, doing her little book about, you know, maybe a spirit cooking, because what's the whole thing about? Spirit cooking, that's what this is all about. Because the twin female energy from the pit 
set a trap that's called the host body. Angels get trapped in it. They get head down. They get one eye that's down, and they don't even know what's going on. That's why the Lord had a night under the stars. And what he did was he had me have all these people come and gather together. And before they got there, he had me go out there with Zach and Corey and Jim and Karen Selvin. The Lord told me I had to take those people. And I he would show up and prove that our other eye went to a star. And when we showed up, the clouds coalesced and made an eye in the sky with all the stars out. At the very moment, I said, the Lord said that if we showed up and looked up, and on the inside of the building, I was standing in the little ark building. Y'all like the air quotes? Y'all like those? Inside the little ark building that turned to all light, by the way, during one of the one of the days over at the ark. That little ark building said, look for the G. It was on the ceiling when we looked up, like, look for the G like God. And we looked up, and there's a big eye in the sky. And all the stars were out. And the Lord said, I will show up and prove to you that your other eye that was hidden by the twin female system I'll prove to you it's a star. And he, we went out there and he made an eye in the sky for me. <laughs> I was like, wow. And we were all blown away, man. We had, you know, it was all videotaped. It's all, it's all in folders. And I did videos on it. People saw it. I documented it. I don't have to sit there like James the Planner and go, I promise, I promise you. Did you know the Bible says anyone that says that, that takes an oath, that's of the evil one? Let me prove that real quick. Let me just show you because... I'm finding it a little bit annoying at this point because you shouldn't be doing this because it hurts. The Lord God. And again, how you so this is, the Lord. this is bad for people. And I asked James in the nicest way, I need you to st please stop doing this. So it's not good. So please stop. He did not heed the warning. So now all the people that hate Jonathan Cleck, by the way, thank you very much for hating me. For the Bible says, Blessed are you when men speak all manner of evil about you falsely for my name's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. I'm going to show you all you guys tonight who I am and what I do, and that the Lord used James Supplanter's channel to get us ready. <laughs> You're going to freak out. Okay, really? What? Ready? Let's see. Okay, James, let's watch you come off the rails. we got to do this real quick. Okay. Here we go, James. You're tempting the Lord God. And again, how are you tempting the Lord God? You're tempting the Lord God by saying, he's coming. Yeah, come on, I'm waiting for him. Listen, please, 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 please listen. If you say he is coming, what does that mean by default? It means you're waiting for him. It means he's not with you. And if you say that, you're tempting the Lord God because he is with you. He's inside of you. He's inside of you. Please, please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. Okay, Listen, let, let please, me, please, 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 please. Let me tell you something. Nobody that speaks with God's authority, nobody that... See, the Lord's used me to lay hands on people that are blind. He had me lay hands on Karen Sullivan, a prophet laid hands on Karen Sullivan, but she's calling me a false prophet. Does that make any sense? So I went and laid hands on her and I told her, if you want your miracle, you have to quit taking your, your chemo, which she used to tell people was, you know, a terrible thing to do, but she's very hypocritical in her statement about that, obviously. And I said, the Lord said, if you listen to what I say and you, you quit doing your chemo, he'll heal you. She was probably, I don't know, she was very close to death. She wasn't looking very good. So the Lord healed her because she took the step of faith and quit taking her chemo. And now she's just being spiteful and she's tempting the Lord day after day. Oh, I thought I was supposed to get sick, Jonathan. I'm like, well, T, I've been praying for you a lot, Karen. And um, the Lord has his way of doing things. I guarantee he has his way of doing things. So just saying, you shouldn't tempt the Lord by mocking his servant that laid hands on you. It's kind of weird to call me a false prophet, but I'm the very person that showed up and laid hands on Karen Sullivan. That's kind of weird because she's saying a false prophet showed up and laid hands on her. That's weird. Or now I'm a false prophet after I laid hands on it. Which one is it? Pick one. Anyway, it's kind of weird. But if I'm a prophet and the Lord sent me to lay hands on her and now she's being spiteful and hateful and mean, which she is, and her and her sister and all these people over there or calling me a false prophet, that's okay. Jesus said you'll be hated and reviled. By who? Well, the serpent race. They're going to hate your guts. Now, don't forget, what started the whole system? 
twin female energy, not twin female girls, twin female energy was the art. It started the female as the archetype. That's why the Adidas original commercials use the female as the archetype. And that's why all these other things I've shown you use twin females. Now, here is James Supplanter, where all these people are rallying behind James. And I'm talking channels from the past. And all these people that hate you, they like, it's crazy. It's like this big tumultuous uprising. It's fascinating. Just wait. Wait. Watch this. James, people that don't, people that serve the Lord God don't have to go, oh, please, please listen. You must listen to me. Oh, please, you must hear the words that I'm saying. What? No, that's not a servant of the Lord. You come with authority. You come with authority, like the Vatican's a snake, like the largest altar in the world's a dead sheep. Hey, Alex, why'd you put the dead sheep on the picture of my face? Do you know who you're speaking with? Why would the angel of the bottomless pit draw a picture of me through a guy named Alex with a dead sheep on me and a serpent eating me and then hand it to me and then say, do you know who you're speaking with? Oh, if I was one of his, wouldn't he know who? I mean, wouldn't we like be chums or something? <laughs> it's like, just. <laughs> It's getting really good. Watch. Ready? Okay. Let's watch this one more time. Let me show you how in error this man is now. Because the gloves are off. I love you in Christ, James. I love you in Christ. But you did not listen. You should have just listened and stopped. But now you've got all the troops rallying behind you, James. And you're giving them little hearts on their comments. <laughs> which means y'all are, are confederate. Y'all are together, which is good. It's a separation. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. Listen again. You're tempting the Lord God. And again, how are you tempting the Lord God? You're tempting the Lord God by saying, he's coming. Yeah, come on. I'm waiting for him. Listen, please, 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 please listen. If you say he is coming, what does that mean by default? It means you're waiting for him. It means he's not with you. And if you say that, you're tempting the Lord God because he is with you. He's inside of you. He's inside of you. Please, please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. Listen, please, 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 please listen. Please, please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. Listen, please, 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 please listen. Please. Please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. I promise, yeah. I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you it's, I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you it's, and what I should have said at the very first mention of tempting the Lord God was that, you are tempting him by thinking and saying it is a physical event where you will see him physically when he comes, appears to you. That is tempting the Lord God. Okay, so now just let's just be done with that. So James totally came off the rails there. And I love you in Christ, James. But like I said, you know, I'm not here to, you know, be uh, buddy buddy with someone that is just destroying the word of God. The Bible says, blessed is that servant whom I find waiting when he returns. So if you're saying I'm tempting the Lord God by waiting on him, then you're just in, flying in the face of scripture. But now, James, you did a really bad thing. You promised, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. No. Well, you know that Matthew 5 says anyone that takes an oath is speaking the words of Satan. So now all the people that are rallying behind you now, it's very clear because you keep saying the Lord is doing this and the Lord is doing that. I'm going to show everybody what the Lord's doing with me. I'm going to say, I've documented what he did. Here it is. Look at it yourself and you decide. But telling people, you must listen, you must listen. No, no, we don't. Those are deceiving words. That's a deceiving spirit. There's a problem here now. What's really fascinating is now you have these two teams. You have the James the Planter group over here, and everybody that's, go get him, James. Go get Jonathan. Go get that battle, Jonathan Clack. And then you have all the lunatic channels that from the past are all rallying behind James. Well, that's fine. 
because everyone that's there belongs there. And then you have Jonathan over here saying, no, 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 wait. I was called as a, in a, as a servant in 2002 to solve this mystery. Ready? Turn it up and you'll see the truth. It's that simple. I'm going to show you Revelation right now. Revelation. Revelation. Ready? Let's look at the book of Revelation because we're going to get into some crazy stuff tonight. And I'm going to show you the supernatural way that the Lord showed me. He is coming. That's a pretty bold statement. I know it's like no one knows the hour of the day. But I have been admonished by the Lord to tell everybody to watch and wait now. And James is saying, oh, no, you shouldn't be watching and waiting because that's tempting the Lord. And then he had to correct it. He did a video and I thought he was doing the right thing. And I thought he was going to correct it, but he did it. He started to and he said, oh, I said it wrong. I, I really did. And I apologize for that. I said it wrong. Well, then how could the Lord be speaking through you if you're saying you said it wrong? Why are you promising, James? I promise. I promise. That the Lord showed you that. Well, the Lord says he doesn't ever send his servants and they're saying, I promise, I promise, I swear. Never, never. But that's what you're doing. Okay, but let me show you Revelation 3, real, uh, Revelation 1, Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him and to show to his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all the things he saw. Here we go, guys. Blessed is he that readeth and hear the words of this prophecy. Okay, what prophecy? The whole book. Ready? You see the word readeth? You see this word anahonosko? You know what anahonosko means? What does that say? Up. Repetition, intensity, and reversal, but it's uh, up. Anna means up. Okay, ready? For all the people on the Jonathan Click side. Okay, ready? The night I got saved, what did the Lord tell me to do? Read the tags in the closure, Karen Jonathan. Okay, 100% nylon. Doesn't make any sense. Turn the word nylon upside down. So I turned it the other way, and it was no lion. 100% no lion. And that's when the Lord was showing me the key to the kingdom of heaven, the key of David, the way of getting out of the serpent's trap that blinded one eye. You turn it up and you see the truth. When you turn everything up, you become whole and the Lord God has lifted you up and made you whole again. Instead of having one spirit that's up, one spirit that's down, you have an angel up, a demon down. Instead, you kick the demon out, you get unified with Christ, and then you have a spirit that looks kind of something like that coming from above that runs you. You don't have some line to the pit that's holding on to you because there's a worm feeding off you anymore. No, 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 no. I'm going to show you things tonight that are going to blow your minds. Ready? <laughs> Here we go. What does it mean? Blessed is he that readeth. What does it say? To know again. To know what? To know up again. <laughs> no big deal. See, it's Ana Hinosko. Ana up Hinosko. What's Hinosko mean? To know absolutely. The only way you can absolutely know the truth is to turn everything up again. And that just happens to be exactly what's written in the, in the book of Revelation in chapter 1. Blessed is he that knows up again. 100% <laughs> no lion. 100% no lion. Okay, now we have all these people that are rallying. There's this tumultuous uprising thing happening. You can see it. Just go read the comments. Okay, now this is really exciting. Watch this. I told you all these things led to all these supernatural events starting to happen. I mean, I'm like, what's going on? So let's let's talk about those now. Okay, like forget about James. I love you in Christ. Stop. Just stop. Just quit doing bits. Just go be alone with the Lord for a while. You're wrong. Okay. You do not promise. I promise that the Lord is giving you this message. Have you promised the Lord is giving you the message? Then the Lord is not giving you the message at all. Let me prove it. Either the Bible's wrong, James, or you're wrong. Ready? Let's do it. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to chapter 5. And let's see what it says right here under oaths. As you have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswell thyself, 
forswear thyself, but perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Thine oaths? But I say unto you, swear not at all. Look at the word swear. It means to declare an oath, to swear, to promise, to take an oath. I promise, I promise the Lord is telling me. No, he's not. He says right there, my guys don't do oaths. <laughs> so either James is right, either James is right, or the Bible's right. Which one is it? But I say unto you, swear not at all. Does it say declare an oath? Yes or no? Okay, so does he do it over and over again while he's begging you to please listen to him? It's a yes or no. Let's look at the word promise. Is an oath. An oath is a promise. <laughs> what is the oath taking a promise? So, okay, so yes or no? So did James say, I promise, I promise, listen to me. You must listen to me. The Lord is telling me all this. Did he do that? Yes or no? He just played it for you. Okay, James, you're not hearing from the Lord because the Lord does not send his servants saying, I promise the Lord told me, I promise the Lord showed me, I promise I'm not being prideful or arrogant. No, you're, you're trying to tell the person that the Lord God showed the serpent race, killing the sheep race. You're trying to tell the guy that the Lord solved the mystery of everything, that you're over and above what the Lord's doing through him. Even when I showed you the scriptures that you were in error, you're telling people that if you're waiting on the Lord, you're tempting God. Have any of you guys ever seen a movie called The Arrival? I've never seen it. Don't even know what it is. But this morning when I opened up YouTube just to check on comments and stuff, the Lord told me, click on that Arrival thing. And I'm like, that's weird. So I clicked on it. It started playing a little bit. Let me show you. And this was the end. Okay, that was a really weird thing for me to see when I clicked on on the arrival. It was a woman talking about she had a, a, a child, a girl, and she said, I thought it was the beginning of your story, but, and then it shows her and she had cancer and it says it was the end. And I was like, wow, that's kind of scary because I know Karen Sullivan has been pontificating that she hasn't gotten she hasn't declined in her health yet after the Lord told me to tell her he was going to take all her blessings from her. So she's out there just running her mouth saying, oh, Jody, I thought I was supposed to get sick. You're a false prophet. Her sister's doing the same thing. I'm praying for him like, guys, stop. They won't stop. But now, what a weird thing to see. It says the arrival and then it starts off by someone saying, I thought it was the beginning of your story but it's really the end and I just thought well that's kind of weird but I heard the Lord say watch the movie I didn't want to watch it I don't like watching movies during the day it's not something I do the Lord said watch it okay now you remember James said if you think you're gonna go up and meet the Lord in the air he's like it's breathing he tried to take first Thessalonians 4 and trash it so let me go back and sh and undo the the harm that he's done to anybody. So let me go back and show you 1 Thessalonians 4 because he tried to show you the wrong word. And I, show, I said, then when we which were alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. See the word clouds? Caught up. It means to catch up, a way to pluck, to take by force, to seize, and to take for oneself and together with them in the clouds. See it right there? Cloudiness. It says cloudiness, and the root of it is a cloud. And James said, see, to meet the Lord in the air, and he clicked on the word air right here, and he says, see, it says it means to breathe and to blow. Well, that's because we become part of his spirit, his whole essence. We're caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds and to meet him in the air. But see, James is saying that's not right. 
He's saying you won't see him physically. The Bible says every eye will see him. Every eye will see him. I showed it to you in the last video. Every eye. The word for eye is eye, and the word for see is to gaze upon as something remarkable. That's the exact definition. But James is saying no. I'm saying yes. Let me show you what the Lord showed me. You want to see what's in the rest of this video he made me watch called The Arrival? And then I'll show you how he walked me into the art gallery just to prove it. <laughs> so crazy. Woo! Here we go, guys. Ready? Okay, so I thought it was the beginning, but it was the end. I would freak out if I was somebody. So here they are. Let me frame this up for you. Here they are going into this. It looks like an elongated egg, but the hatch opens in the bottom. They go up in a lift. And then they get out of the lift inside this thing. It's not a spaceship. You can't tell what it is. It's kind of organic. But when they get in it, the hallway, thats it's a square hallway. When they get in it, gravity changes. Now, aren't I, am I this guy? Am I the guy that shows that if you want to get converted, if you want to talk to the Lord God, you got to get flipped. Yeah, you got to get inverted. Then you're, then you're connected kind of like that once you get inverted. Then you have your connection and you're wide awake. Now I'm wide awake. Because this way I was half asleep, awake, asleep, half awake, half asleep. But then you're wide awake. And when you're wide awake, you're like that. Because that's the Spirit of the Lord God controlling you. Okay? Yeah? Have I said that? Am I the right side upside down guy? Am I the guy that shows you that the rock is being inverted and put together as one? Is, is that the Jonathan Clegg? If it's not, then I'm, this is not going to mean anything. But if I am the, his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace guy. If I'm that guy, if I'm the guy that went to Chinati and the Lord gave two halves of the same rock and said, put them together. But see, James, believe me, no, you must listen to me. I promise, I promise, no, James, no one should listen to you ever, bro, ever, ever. You never promise when you're preaching for the Lord. Oh, I swear. No, James, no. All such speaking is of the evil one. We'll get back to this in a sec. We need to see that. I forgot to show it to you. You need to see it in Matthew 5. All such speaking is what? James, what did you do? Did you take an oath? Yes or no? Did you say, I promise, I promise? But let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than that cometh of evil. What does evil mean? Hurtful, evil, the evil one, essential character. Evil, bad, evil, grievous, harm, malicious. So see, it looks like the devil's trying to use James to get people to be busy fighting with all this group of people that like to malign people and speak maliciously all the time about them. By the way, the Lord told me a long time ago, just ignore them all, Jonathan, just ignore them. I was like, do you want me to do something? He said, no, just ignore them. But now he's telling me, show them this. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this. Ready? Okay, James, I'm sorry. Your speaking is, say it out loud, any, any whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. Okay, we've got to document that because it needs to be documented because you could damage the sheep very badly. And then we'll go back to that little video clip. Okay, guys, and I'm sorry, I'm really excited. I'm so, I'm so hyped up right now because <laughs> the Lord took me to the art gallery. He took me to the art gallery to get me to go to Chinati. He took me to the art gallery to get me to go to BlackRock. He took me to the art gallery the other day to show me he's coming. And I'm just going to show you how he did it. But I got to make a record. James, yes or no? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Did you take an oath telling everybody they must believe you? Yes or no? Let's watch. You're tempting the Lord God. And again, how are you tempting the Lord God? You're tempting the Lord God by saying, he's coming. Yeah, come on, I'm waiting for him. 
Listen, please, 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 please listen. If you say he is coming, what does that mean by default? It means you're waiting for him. It means he's not with you. And if you say that, you're tempting the Lord God because he is with you. He's inside of you. He's inside of you. Please, please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. Listen, please, 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 please listen. Please, please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear. Okay, do you notice something that doesn't sound quite right? Yes or no? He's pleading with you to hear his words. He doesn't come with anything except, I promise. I promise. Have you ever heard me say, oh, I promise, I swear, this is what God should? I'm like, no, here I got witnesses. I photographed it. It's in a folder. This is what the Lord told me to show to you. You don't do this. This is not the behavior you do. Not at all. No. In the words that I am saying, church, listen, please, 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 please listen. Please. Please hear the words that I am saying. Please hear the words that I am saying, church. I promise. Yeah. I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you it's, I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you. Okay. I've heard enough. Okay. There you go. Now. Again, I've shown you, and I've shown you very clearly that the Bible stands in complete opposition. But let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than that cometh of evil. Neither shalt thou swear, what's the word swear? To declare on oath. To declare on oath. Is a promise an oath? Yes or no? Is a promise an oath? It's a yes or no answer. Let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Is a promise and oath. An oath is a promise. So you just violated the number one thing that the Lord said, above all things, never take an oath. I even told you in the video before you did this video. Okay, now we're done. I'm done with James now. I love you, James. I'm sorry, but I can't let you lead sheep astray. We're too close to the second coming of Christ. <laughs> By the way, that's what I was called for. You know, the 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 king's crown and the shofar clack yeah that's what i was called to do was to announce his his coming and you're telling people they're doing something wrong by waiting for it okay now i'm completely done talking about the james thing i'm done talking about all the haters over at the james channel i'm going to show you what the lord showed me now i'm going to i'm going to show you my resume within 10 minutes I'm going to show you that the Lord had me decrypt a hieroglyph that's 1,300 years before Christ of a serpent race consuming a sheep race. That was one of the first things the Lord showed me, a serpent race in a hieroglyph, a serpent being inside Akhenaten, knocking up some other girl, some girl on her knees, and she's not Nefertiti, so she's a different race, creating a hybrid kid that's got a dead sheep in his head and a freaking reptile in his head. That's the serpent race. Isn't it weird that the Vatican is a serpent with a sheep in its mouth? Isn't it weird that Akhenaten turns his kid upside down and Akhenaten becomes a serpent being eating his own kid? Don't you think that's weird? The Vatican's the same thing. Downtown Grand Junction is the same thing. There's a girl hugging a guy, and it turns to a serpent strangling a sheep. So now we have three serpents strangling sheep. The Vatican, Akhenaten and Nefertiti, and a statue in downtown Grand Junction. What about my wife giving me a card of a serpent eating a sheep? Now we have the same agenda four times. The same agenda. A serpent race eating a sheep race. What about the picture that Marcel did that's right over here on the wall of a serpent eating me with a dead sheep on top of my head? Now we have five. What about Alex saying, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. And I said he would, you know how? Because he winks his eye like Gene Rebel's channel. You know, the one eye symbology. Alex was winking his eye at me and sticking out his tongue. Hey, Johnny, how's it going, man? Yeah, hey, Johnny. <laughs> hey, Johnny. 
And I said, Chris, I'll bet you a million dollars he draws a picture of me and he puts a dead sheep on my face. You know how I know? Because he's the serpent race! I can see him! Uh-huh. And so he did. Alex drew a picture of me. He said, hey, I drew a picture of you, Johnny. We can have later. Why'd you put the serpent on my face, uh, Alex? Do you know who you're speaking with? Yes, I do. Do you know who you're speaking with? Okay, now I'm going to show you how the Lord showed me. You better be watching. You better be waiting. I'll say it again. You better be watching. You better be waiting. I'll say it one more time. You better be watching. And you better be waiting. The serpents are all gathering behind James. The sheep who I protect. Remember Chief Watchman Melvin Warren? Because I look out for the sheep. But the serpents that are mean, nasty people are gathering together over behind James. There is an uprising. It's like all tumultuous. And I'm just, I've had enough of them. The Lord told me just ignore them. But now he's saying, now stand up for what I show you. So I'm going to do what he says. Here you go. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. Let's watch the rest of the little clip from the arrival, which happened this morning. Here you go. You ready? The arrival. Okay, so now the people that have gone into this structure that's like a long stretched out egg or something, it's organic. They go inside, they go up to, straight through the center, but then it inverts them and they're upside down. And the woman that's speaking is like an oracle. She's a linguist. But whatever the entity is communicates with her and she has the ability to understand its language and that's what the movie is really all about. And she, because of her ability to understand the language, she's able to save a lot of people. That's interesting because the person talking to you, the Lord taught me the language that Elohim speaks, the language of angels. So I could ha say, help save you and help get you out of here because Jesus is coming. Now watch this. It wasn't something crazy. Wasn't Gene, I mean, wasn't Gene, I'm sorry, Gene, gave you a little too much credit. All you do is hate. I mean, I have to admit, James does a lot more for people than you're doing. But didn't James say, it's not a physical thing? If you think you're going to go meet the Lord in the clouds, he's like, oh, no, it's breathing. No, it's not. That's becoming part of his breath when you leave. But watch. Are they all upside down? It's a yes or no. Okay, so she communicates with it and it's able to give her a message and then she's able to save a lot of people. Let me show you what happens, show you what happens to the whatever that thing is that they went up into. Here you go. There's one of them. They all turn to clouds and leave. Every one of them turns to a cloud. Okay, pay attention now. Wow, this fly. Now see, when James started doing videos telling people, oh, you're not supposed to be looking for Jesus or you're tempting God, I was like, that's insane. And the Lord told me, go stand against it. I want you to go right now, stand against it. I didn't want to do it. The Lord proved it over and over again. I said, okay, and then I was typing him another note and all the writing turned to red. Part, well, not all of it. Part of the writing turned to red. And James decided to pick and choose defending because it was the Lord defending James. No, it wasn't, James. May the Lord rebuke you, my friend. It wasn't the Lord defending you. It was you choosing a word, saying that's what it meant, while you're promising, promising, and you're leading people astray. You said, no, no, you're not going to go meet the Lord in the clouds. It means to breathe. Go back and watch his videos. Go listen to his words. I've gone over them and over them. Watch what happens here. Do you think it's possible the Lord had me watch a movie where someone's able to communicate with a higher power? And they said, you know what their weapon is? You know what the weapon is of that, that entity? 
opening a door in time. Hmm. Let's see. And the porter will stand by the door, and those that are ready go in. In this movie, there is a door that opens in time. That's what they said. That's what the weapon is. A door opening in time. What am I waiting for? Well, I'm waiting for a door to open. It says, when the porter opened at the door, those that were ready go into the wedding. Well, how weird that the movie the Lord had me watch this morning, and I don't watch movies during the day, ever. Well, not ever. I go with Dave on Fridays to see movie, new movies that come out, but that's different. I don't sit there at home and watch a movie during the day. Here you go. Ready? Watch. Is this turning to a cloud and leaving? Yes or no? <laughs> wow, it turned to a cloud and it's leaving. Look, and it's gone. Wow, wait a minute. What was that scripture I was trying to show James? Wait a minute. Well, besides the oath thing, aren't we supposed to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? And... In Ma in First Thessalonians four, and to always be with Him. Let's see. And then they which are alive and remain shall be caught up to catch up, seize and take by force, together with them in the clouds. See the clouds. Let me ask you a question: Is that turning into a cloud and leaving? That's what happens during the entire ending. All of them, there's eight of them across the world, and they all turn into clouds and leave. <laughs> now, see, that's a miracle. That's not me going, oh, I promise you must listen to me. Listen, oh, please listen. Please listen to me. Please, I promise, I promise. No, 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 no. But you're looking at a miracle right now. The Lord had me watch a movie where at the very beginning to catch my attention. You like the air quotes? You like those Johnny air quotes? At the beginning of the movie, there's a mom and she said, well, I thought it was your beginning, but it was really your end. And then some girls got cancer and dies. That's kind of scary, especially for someone that's just scoffing at the messenger that came and laid hands on her. And has no regard for the person that put out so much for so many people in their in their hemisphere. Okay, that's fine. The same person stood in the gap from a lot of people trying to go after Karen and her mother. And I stood in the gap and said, no one's going after him. Because I kept my word to someone named Chuck. I told him I would do that for him. And what he told me he would do is make sure that Karen and Kathy didn't go out and speak maliciously. That was his word to me. Chuck, you haven't kept your word at all. Is that turning into a cloud? So these are all turning into clouds. They're all turning into clouds. So the entities that came to help everybody that are in just a shape and they go in and when you go in, you turn upside down, you know, like Jonathan Kleck's always going like this, make one new man from the two that's making peace. And when she goes in, she's a linguist, she's able to communicate with them and she turns upside down and it's called the arrival, really? And they're opening a door in time and then they turn into clouds and leave? Do you find that a little weird, anybody? <laughs> It's like, hello? <laughs> well, y'all haven't even seen what happened at the art gallery yet. <laughs> it's like so crazy. But I promise! I'm just being a smarty. I'm sorry. Sorry, James. I've had enough. I love you in Christ, but when you keep doing the same thing and you're going directly against Scripture, it kind of fires me up. I feel the indignation of the Lord in me. I really do. You can't do that. It hurts sheep. But all the serpents seem to be behind you, so eh, I'm just saying. There seems to be a lot of... So if I'm a sheep and all the drawings that people do of me, they put a dead sheep on me, and they have a serpent eating me, then I'm obviously, I'm obviously a sheep. 
and the people handing me the images, who are they serving? Obviously the serpent. So if there's a group of people that just have a Jonathan Kleck hate party and there's a bunch of them, that would suggest they're the serpent. It's that simple. Well, what's really crazy is the whole thing before I ever met any twin females, the Lord showed me, was showing me it was a twin female system. The Ian Bud Light commercial. Oh, everyone here is a twin? Yeah, Ian, and you're the food. As soon as you find out, What's going on? We're all going to hate you. <laughs> okay, here we go. There it is again. That's it. They turn to a cloud and they leave. Okay, now, if you're me and you're sitting there going, wow, that's what I've been doing is defending the gospel against James and all the people that are trying to give James a little pat on the back, which are all the Jonathan Kleck haters. I'll call them the serpents at this point. All the serpents are over there giving James a little pat on the back. Okay, well, that looks like the Lord showing me something that I'm defending. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds. I wonder what the odds are. It's called the arrival. I wonder what the odds are that they turn upside down going into it. And I wonder what the odds are that it turns to a cloud and leaves. I go and prepare a place for you. If I go again and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may also be. Blessed is that servant that is found waiting. When the door opens, he'll go in. I don't think anyone on James' scene is going into that door. I just, I'm being honest. How could they? They don't even believe it. So if you don't believe it, how could you actually go into the door that opens? The one that's mentioned in the Bible. Question mark. Okay, this is a whole new part of the video. Ready? Okay, new part of the video. The Lord takes Jonathan Kleck to the art gallery where he got him to go to Chinati. Now, for those of y'all that know the story about Chinati, when the Lord God communicated to me, he wanted me to go to Chinati. It was like, what? I showed you in the last video that he walked me into an art gallery that had wind blades he said, go in that building. I'll prove to you I want you to go to Chinati. And I walked in and the guy said, come on in. Yeah, I specialize in artists that do West Texas Big Bend landscapes, which is where Chinati is. Okay, that's impossible. And then the number one painting, I showed it to you in the last video. You know what? We should probably look at it. Okay, so let's just prove this out now. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the Lord communicating. I want you to watch. But I want you to understand, he's taken me to the art gallery three times. Three times. The first time he took me, I said, Lord, you really want me to go into the place that's got the wind blades? There they are. See, I don't have to promise you. I don't have to sit there and beg you to believe me. I'm just going to let my yes be yes and my, my testimony be my testimony. This is what happened. There is proof. I was praying coming around the corner. I said, Lord, you really want me to take my wind blades? And I looked right at those wind blades. And the Lord said, go in the place with the wind blades. I went in the building with the wind blades. When I walked in, a guy walked up to me and said, hey, I'm so-and-so. I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes like Big Bend. And the biggest painting on the wall right in front of me was a shepherd leading sheep in Big Bend, which is where Chinati is. It had a plaque on it. The Lord said, I want you to photograph the plaque. I photographed the plaque. It said Melvin Warren. Then the Lord told me to look up the name uh, Melvin and look up Warren. Melvin means chief and Warren means watchman. Okay, Melvin Warren, chief watchman. So that's when the Lord let me know, Jonathan, you are the chief watchman for this generation. Go to the desert. Take your parachute. I'll show you where to jump. When I went, he gave me two halves of the same rock. He put me in a building that had a star in it, like representing one of God's angels, the stars. I had a Royal Enfield motorcycle he told me to take with me. That was my secondary form of transportation so I could jump and leave my motorcycle somewhere and still get back. And so there is the motorcycle, the Royal Enfield. There's proof. There's Jonathan at the location. Let me just prove to you it was a Royal Enfield. There it is, a Royal Enfield with a crown on it in front of a building that was made up of rocks, river stones, and the whole thing had been split in half. But the uh, the caretaker, Danny, said your whole building was split in half, but a company picked it up, 
picked it up off the ground, put it on a rock foundation, or made a rock foundation and set it back down. You know, like I'm trying to do, put you on the rock. I'm trying to put you on the rock foundation, which is what I am on. Which is what I am on. Jesus is that rock, by the way. So here we go. There's proof. I'm not begging you to please. I'm not promising you. I'm just saying that's what the Lord did. Then walking down this riverbed with trillions of rocks, the Lord told me this is where your LZ is going to be. Here's proof. You want to see proof? It's right there. It's right there. It's it's two red triangles intersecting, making a red X inside of a blue tarp. Now the Lord told me to anchor it down, but as I walked out there, the Lord handed me two of the same, two halves of the same rock. There they are. He told me to put it in the dead center of the X and take a picture of it. There is absolute proof. It's two halves of the same rock. You can see it's perfectly put together. Okay, so now we're entering into a supernatural zone that's so mind-boggling right now. This is like a, a biblical story. I'm not saying, oh, I promise, I promise, you must hear me, you must know. No, 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 James. I'm not going for it. And I don't want anyone else to go for it because it's misleading. So then when I left to go do my jump, I had set up my wind blades at different locations so I could see the wind as I was coming in. And I had L, V for vengeance, L, the almighty God. And then the Lord split my LZ right in half, representing the two different races, male and female energy. There's the male energy. He cleans it. Here's the female energy over here. It's as dirty as dirty gets. That's the twin female energy from the bit. Ready? Anyone that thinks that says something wrong, ready for the Bible? Hell hath enlarged herself beyond measure. The time of her judgment has come. Her sins are piled high as heaven. Her pedenda goes down to hell. End of story. That's who I am. I'm the one to point all this out. So there's proof the Lord had me document every bit of it and he would use me to put the rock back together and show you there it is okay nice cut on my thumb i remember that thing hurt okay there it is now here's proof of walking in the art gallery now here's something that i'm going to show you for the second time he got me to go i'm going to show right here okay now i'm just going to tell you the 100 percent truth of how i ended up at black rock okay so the Lord had communicated through a guy named Steve at a place called the Motorcycle Shop when he sent me to Chinati. He, This guy walked up to me and said, have you ever been to Chinati? And I heard the Lord say, pay attention. And that's how the whole Chinati thing started. And then the Lord told me, I want you to go. I had trouble believing him. And then I was like, Lord, please tell me you want me to take my wind blades. And he walked me in the place with the wind blades. He showed me a, a painting of a, a, a watchman and his sheep. And then it said, Melvin Warren, chief watchman. He said, Jonathan, you're the chief watchman. Go to Chinati. I did what he said. He gave me two halves of the same rock. My building was split in half. It was put back together, set down on the rock. My LZ was split directly in half. And only the Lord God could have done those because those are insane miracles. That's insane. Okay. What about going to Black Rock? Well, I was going to the post office and I had pulled up. This guy pulls up on a black motorized bicycle and I'm going, wow, that's the guy from the motorcycle shop, Steve. The same guy that had said, hey, have you ever been to Chinati? I walked in the post office. Steve's like, hey, how have you been? I'm like, hey, Steve, what's going on? And he goes, hey, have you ever been to Gila? I was like, and I heard the Lord say, pay attention, Jonathan. Pay attention. And I went, oh my gosh. Okay, now what, Lord, are you telling me you want me to go to some place called Gila? And I told him, I was like, no, I've never been there. He's like, it's really cool. You should check it out. So I get in the car and I'm like, Corey, this is so weird, man. You know how I went to Chinati? That's the same guy that asked me if I had ever been. It's so freaky. Now, don't forget, the Black Rock from Chinati had been bound together from a guy named Colin that owns a company called Black Rock. <laughs> I wonder what the odds are. Anyway, so I go back to the motorcycle shop to talk to Steve because I'm like, I think the Lord's trying to send me to this place. And Corey pulls up uh, Gila on his phone. And instead of Gila just coming up, he spelled it wrong. He didn't understand it was like Spanish with a J. And so he spelled it H-I-L-A. It brought up a place called Black Rock. 
And I heard the Lord say, I want you to go to BlackRock. And I looked at Corey and I'm like, okay, I'm very conflicted. I don't know what to do. Because he said Gila, but BlackRock came up on your phone. And now I hear the Lord telling me, go to BlackRock, Jonathan. I want you to go to BlackRock. Take the Black Rocks and go to BlackRock. And I was driving with Corey and I was like, man, this is so overwhelming. The Lord's telling me to go to BlackRock and I'm just driving down Austin Highway. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And I was speaking out loud in front of Corey. And I said, Lord, I'm not sure what to do. I keep hearing you telling me you want me to go to BlackRock, but I, I just, I don't know for sure. Lord, could you make it as obvious as you made it when you sent me to Chinati and you walked me into that art gallery? The moment the words came out of my mouth, I looked over to the left, and there that same art gallery was. And I went, wow. And the Lord said, turn in, and I turned in. And then Corey said the strangest thing. Corey said, yeah, let there be 20 black people in the back room. <laughs> I was like, what? I looked at Corey, and I'm like, what in the world does that mean? Let there be 20 black people in the back room? Corey, that is so weird. And Corey was just giggling. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That is so, that's, I was just like, dude, what are you doing, man? I'm sitting here imploring God to show me, do you want me to go to BlackRock? Make it easy. Take me in that, like when you took me in the art gallery. Oh, wow, there's the art gallery. Jonathan, go in. Oh, and Corey says, let there be 20 black people in the back room. <laughs> I was just like, what? Okay, yeah. It's kind of weird, right? God's got a sense of humor. I said, dude, I cannot believe you just blew it, Corey. Thanks for blowing it for me. So I walk in the door of the gallery. Corey walks in behind me, and there's only really there's only two rooms. You walk in the front room. That's where the the Chinati painting was. Then there's another room to the left. So I walk into the art gallery, and so does Corey. And I walk back, and I'm standing right here. You see the painting of the black lady right there. There's one painting right here. You see this doorway right here? Watch this. You see this doorway right here that it's also a gallery? Well, that light was completely off, and I was standing right here in front of this painting right here, and it was a nude of a black lady. Corey was in the front room, and just to be a smarty, I said, hey, Corey, come here. And I was just like joking around. I was like, there's your... There, there, there's my confirmation. As soon as Corey walked up to me, as soon as he stood next to me, you see this doorway right here? The light went on in that room. Now you can probably see right here, this is a black guy, this is a black lady. All these paintings in the back room I didn't even know there was a back room. Corey had never been in the art gallery before. Let there be 20 black people in the back room? <laughs> That's what, what? Well, that killed it, I knew for sure, because it's on the edge of one of the most affluent neighborhoods in all of San Antonio. And if you had a a field, you know, if you had some in, in NAACP, uh, I don't think they would be showing up at that art gallery. But the light went on in the back room as soon as Corey came up next to me. And guess what? I walked in there and I was like, oh, there were 21 images of black people painted in the back room. <laughs> okay, let me tell you something. You know, a lot of people, oh, that's racist. That was the Lord using Corey to make sure I went to Black Rock. Corey didn't even know why he said it. I looked at him like, why did you say that? That is so random. Corey doesn't say stuff like that. That's just like weird. Corey's like, uh. Because the Lord knew there's 20 black people in the back room on paintings. I'd never even seen a back room. So then I packed up and I went to Black Rock. Did you see all the miracles in Black Rock? Did you see the two X's on the bridge where it said Louis on one side and Lord said throw it on the other side? It's all water under the bridge, Johnny. Did you see the W just like the night I walked out of the alley that was on the wall where it says whatsoever man so it that must he always preach? That that must he uh, reap? Whatever man so it that must he reap? 
Remember the W's, the way they were, with this very unusual triangle tying the V's together? Right there on the bridge? What? Well, of course everybody knows the Lord sent me to both those places. You know why? Because they came with power and miracles. No one could orchestrate that. No one could even think of it. Well, guess what? It just happened again. <laughs> yeah, it just happened again a couple of days ago when James was telling everybody that, no, you're not supposed to be waiting for Jesus because that's tempting God. Wrong, James. I've had enough of the serpent behavior. Enough of people drawing pictures of me with dead sheep. Eh, do a picture of you, Johnny. Why'd you picture the dead sheep, you serpent? Well, so after the thing with James and I, Lord told me I had to confront him and, and do it in a loving, kind way, which I did. We went for a little breakfast and we got some food and we went and sat down in a park by the zoo in San Antonio. And the Lord told me, Jonathan, step out on faith like you did with Zach and Corey when you were in Houston. When you told them, when I told you to tell them that if you told them we showed up at the ark and invited Jim and Karen, I will show up and prove that your other eye goes to a star. Did the Lord show up? Well, gee, let me see. The moon was full. He coalesced all the clouds and made an eye in the sky and all the stars were out. And he was going to prove that our other eye, like the eye in the sky that coalesced out of nowhere, went to the stars and the stars were still out. And you could still see the stars while you were looking at a big rainbow eye in the sky. It was pink and green with an X in the middle. <laughs> I was like, ah. okay, that's the Lord. Well, he just did it again. Not only did he show me the arrival, like probably meaning he's arriving, and when you go in to talk to whatever the entity is, it inverts you, and then it's talking to the girl that's a linguist, and she has a way of understanding it, and then she's able to save a lot of people, and then that entity turns to a cloud and leaves? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh-huh. No, I promise. No. I don't have to promise. My yay and my testimony stands. It is what it is. Now watch this. Ready? Okay, so this is how the Lord got me to go to Janati and I documented, I mean to BlackRock, and I documented. I didn't want to tell everybody back then about the let there be 20 black people in the back room because I knew I'd have to listen to all the haters, be weirdos, like, oh, you're so racist. No, it was just a weird thing that the Lord used in order to make sure I went. And he made sure there's 21 black people in the back room. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So I just want to prove to you the eye in the sky that uh, showed up at the ark. And this is a little faded out, but you can see the, the center and then the outer layer. And then this is kind of not as bright as it was. But I documented this and then I put it next to my parachute to show the X right in the middle. Same thing. Absolutely insane, but it was very tight and it was very stunning and everybody was going what in the world But it showed up as a big eye in the sky But the stars were still out and the Lord said in front of witnesses and I said it the Lord said Jonathan step out on faith in front of Corey and Zach and say if you if we go out to the ark tonight the Lord said he will show up and prove that our other eye goes to the stars and an eye showed up in the sky right then when we went out and the stars were still out and we were all in awe. Isn't that interesting? That's what the twin female system hid was our other eye. That's why Gene Rebel has an eye going in the, in the face on his, on his uh, moniker. That's why the movie Serpent Queen, they put a stake in someone's eye. That's why there's a demon putting a stake in the eye of a Christian. Cause that's what they do. They blind you. <laughs> it's so obvious. <laughs> Okay, so now here we go. Yeah, so anyway, there's some really cool pics, and the Lord showed up and made it happen. Now, let's go to what happened now. Y'all ready for what happened a couple of days ago? Okay, well, let me give you another testimony. Ready? Way back when, when before I knew Karen was speaking so maliciously about me all the time, she was having a trouble sleeping. 
I don't know why, if you're doing okay with the Lord, you shouldn't have the kind of trouble sleeping that she had. But I tried to be sympathetic and ask her if there's anything I could do to help. Um, the Lord awakened me at 12, 12 one night. He told me to document the time. He told me to call Karen Sullivan. I said, I can't call Karen Sullivan. It's 12, 12. The Lord told me to document the time. He said, document it right now. So I, I shot it on my phone. 12, 12. I went and sent Karen an email. I said, I'll send her an email. I sent her an email saying, look, the Lord told me to, to contact you. I didn't want to call you. It was late. He said, 12, 12 is very important and it, that I need to talk to you. I was having a dream and Karen was running up this long road. It went to nowhere. It just kept going and going. It went to nowhere. It just kept going. And she was, she was running. But I was in heaven standing before a wall of light. And the light was talking to me going, Jonathan, go tell Karen she's never going to make it. Tell her she can stop running. And I woke up. I was like, what? That was so weird. And the Lord told me, document the time right now, 12, 12. And so I was like, okay. And I talked and then he said, call Karen. I go, I can't call her. It's 12, 12. It was really weird as it was daylight saving time. And that really played into it too, because it was proved it couldn't be fudged. And so did you know at 12, 12 AM, you know what Karen Sullivan was doing? She was screenshotting her screen. She was awake. And you know what was on her screen? The, the moniker or the screen of a video I had done called... I think the land, like it said, the land of Esau and Jacob. And it had Esau and Jacob, like the map and the Jordan River going through it. And when she screenshotted it, guess what time it was? 12, 12. So I wake up from, I'm awakened by the Lord from a dream at 12, 12 a.m. He tells me to document it. He tells me to make sure I contact Karen. I wouldn't call her. I sent her an email. And then the next morning I call her and I tell her what's going on. She's like, Oh my God, that is insane. I screenshotted my screen and it's the land of Esau and the land of Jacob on her screen. And it says 12, 12 AM. I go, yeah, well, he wanted me to give you a message. Here's the message. You're never going to make it. Stop running. And I thought the Lord was trying to, you know, help her get some sleep like quit running quit staying up all night i think i know what it means now quit running you're never gonna make it what else could it be so anyway sisyphus reminds me of sisyphus anyway so i delivered that message and that was supernatural but here's the point i was awakened a few nights ago when this james thing was going on and I was like, the Lord awakened me to a noise in my room. <laughs> I'm like, what is that noise? And I had laid down at six o'clock because I had such a bad headache because all these weird supernatural things had been happening that day. And I was dealing with the nonsense from James. I laid down at like 630. I was awakened from my sleep. I didn't wake up. I was awakened. There's a difference. I sat up and I was like, well, I laid down at 6.30. So the first thing I did was I, I grabbed my phone to see what time it was. That was the very first thing I did. Let me show you what time it was because I screenshotted it. Y'all want to see the way the Lord told me to communicate to y'all that everybody better be vigilant right now? We're getting to that in just a minute. So I got up and I looked at my phone and I went, oh, wow, it's 3.20. Oh, my God, I laid down at 6.30. It's 3.20 a.m. What the hell's going on? And I hear this. <laughs> and I go over to my artwork. I have a wall of my artwork and it's lit up with all these colored lights. And one of the motors was really straining and it was going. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And I put my hand on it. And it was really hot. And they have warnings that they can catch on fire. And I went, oh, wow, I better unplug this. I was like, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. And then right then I heard the Lord say, screenshot your screen. Screenshot right now what time it is. See, 322. 
Sunday, April 30th, screenshot it. And I said, well, Lord, I woke up at 320. I woke up at 320 and the Lord said, screenshot your phone right now. And I went, okay. And so I went over and I grabbed it and I screenshot it. It was 3.22 a.m. See, Sunday, 3.22 a.m. So see, I'm not swearing and begging you to believe me. I'm documenting everything. And so then the Lord told me, look up 3.22. When I got up in the morning, the Lord said, look up 3.22. Then look up 3.20. And then we're going to get to going to the art gallery again. <laughs> Y'all ready? Y'all want to freak out? Here is the word Sunday, April 30th. You can even see the date it was posted on Sunday, April 30th. And here's what it said. 322. The word is Anna Anad Aiknumi. To lift up and show forth. I show forth, show clearly, hence I proclaim a person's appointment to office. What's really fascinating is at that point I was saying, James, the Lord's appointed me. You're not appointed. You've appointed yourself. I'm sure James will say, oh no, that's for him. <laughs> Let me show you what it says. To lift up anything on high and exhibit for all to behold. Hence to show clearly, accurately, to disclose what was hidden. To proclaim someone as, as elected to an office, to announce as an appointed king, general, or messenger. 322, to lift up and make clearly disclose what was hidden. That's all this ministry's ever done since I've been converted, is to disclose, disclose what was hidden. That's all I've done. Vatican's a snake. It's eating a sheep. Akhenaten is a serpent being eating a sheep. Downtown Grand Junction is a statue of a girl hugging a guy. It's a serpent eating a sheep. My wife gave me a greeting card. It's a serpent eating a sheep. Marcel gave me a piece of wood. It's a serpent eating a sheep on a likeness of me. Alex gave me a drawing. It's a serpent eating a sheep on a piece of paper. So see, I'm the guy that's showing the world that dirty, nasty serpent race has been eating sheep since the beginning, and their little party is coming to an end now. To make known, to show clearly. I don't have to swear. I don't have to sit there and say, oh, you got to believe me. I'll prove it right now. There's a serpent being inside Akhenaten. See him? Okay, is anyone trying to tell me that's not a serpent being? Let me ask you a question. Is that a serpent being? I'm sorry, is that a reptile right here? It's a yes or no if I give you the eye. Well, you may see it, you may not. If I put it right here, does it superimpose on top of a dead sheep? It's a yes or no. Is that a dead sheep? It's a yes or no. Yes or no. Is that a dead sheep in the head of the kid? Yes or no. It is. You know, I know the Lord drew it in. He used me to draw it in. Is a serpent being eating a sheep in this in this uh, hieroglyph? He sure is. All you got to do is turn it upside down. That's how you can read their language. You turn everything upside down and then you can see their language. There it is. See the serpent guy with his mouth wide open eating the dead sheep? The sheep that's upside down? He's eating his own kid. And when we became children of Satan, he consumes us. That's what happens. Forbidden fruit. So let's see. The Vatican is a snake eating a sheep. The whole Vatican's a snake. We've all seen it. Akhenaten is a serpent being eating his own kid, which is a sheep. Let's look at the other ones. Let's establish a record. Let's make this a record. Because the Lord's shown me now very clearly that it looks like something's going to happen on the clouds. You see the dead sheep there? Is that a dead sheep? It's a yes or no. The answer is yes. Is that an image of a snake? Yes or no? Is that the head of a snake? There's the mouth of the serpent right there. So is the mouth of the serpent right there? Yes or no? 
Is the mouth of the serpent a dead sheep? It's a yes or no. So did I clearly show you a serpent race eating a sheep race? Yes or no. Akhenaten is exactly that. That's what the Vatican is. Let's go to downtown Grand Junction. Downtown Grand Junction. Is that a guy hugging a girl? It's a yes or no. It's a piece of art. You might not be able to see it the best, but it's obviously a guy hugging a girl. Is that a serpent squeezing out a sheep? It's a yes or no. So see, I'm the guy that the Lord God appointed to show that there's a serpent race killing a sheep race because I'm the chief watchman. But there's a channel called James Supplanter where all the serpents are gathering and there's a big tumultuous uprising now. <gasps> That's crazy. Y'all ready to see the art gallery now? Yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. Art gallery now. Let's do it. So I walked into the art gallery and it was absolutely packed compared to any of the other times I've been there. There is, well, when I say absolutely packed, there was enough people that I had to move around a little bit and get out of their way. So I decided to go to the back where that door was with the 20 black people in the back room. I went over there just to get out of the way of the people. Corey came in with me and I stopped and I was waiting for the court to come around and I looked down and I'm like, don't forget the Lord told me, go with Corey and Zach as witnesses. So I walk in and I stop and I stop in front of this painting. The Lord told me, pay attention. Do you know that's a big rock right there? That's a rock and that's a cross on the rock and it's light emanating. And these are like proselytes and they're all going up. See, it's all going up to the rock and the cross. And I was like, that is absolutely crazy. And I heard the Lord say, Jonathan, pay attention. So I look at the little tag and I'm like, here we go. Like Melvin Warren, chief watchman, right? Well, when you get turned up, that's when the light's on in you. When you're like this, the light's not on. You're half light, and half dark. But when you get turned up, you're wide awake. Then you're wide awake, and the energy from the Lord God, his, his spirit, is what controls you. And so here these people are walking up, and I was like, holy moly, it's some new painting. And I looked down, and I this guy took the, the thing down because there was no price on it. See, it says N-A. It's called the procession. And I asked the guy that's in the gallery, I said, how much is that painting? And the Lord told me, pay attention. He cuts on the phone and he comes back and he says it's $23.50. Not $23.50, $2,350. I was like, wow, that's pretty steep for that painting. And the Lord says, look up $23.15 in, in the Bible. It means I disturb greatly, terrify, strike with panic. I show agitation of mind, upheaval, tumult, to make a noise, uproar, turbulent, to disturb, to throw into confusion, to set the city in an uproar. You know, like in Acts 17.6, where it says, these that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. That's Acts 17.6. In Acts 17.5, it says, they set the city in an uproar. Who did? The Christians that turn the world upside down. I was like, wow, that's crazy. To disturb, throw into confusion, set the city in an uproar. To upheaval. There it is. See upheaval? Immediately. You know what the Lord put in my mind? The Adobe Wawa commercial. I was like, oh, that's weird. Because when the Adobe Wawa breaks loose, remember the commercial? There's a license plate. And the Lord said, remember the license plate? Guess what it is? The number was 181, but it's upheaval. Ready? Watch. Let's watch it. Because this is what's coming, guys. Pay attention now. Because here comes all my testimony. This is it. I'm going to give you the testimony. Here is the license plate from the Adobe Wawa commercial. And it is a hybrid that has broken free and it's causing terror, complete upheaval. And the word itself is upheaval on that license plate. Let's watch it. Because it's going to get even better now. See it? 2NRA. Here we go. A Dober Wawa.
you could always compromise and breed them together. You see what he's doing? He's doing this. You could compromise. And then at some point at the end of the hendecagram, when the hendecagram runs its course, then the two become one and all hell breaks loose. I've been telling you guys that for a while. At the end of the hendecagram, when the two faces come face to face, all hell breaks loose. That's when it all happens. But for those of us that are ready, we'll be at peace. We'll be looking up, waiting and watching for the Lord, which James told you not to do, or you're tempting God. Now let's go back and watch this, watch. I think I like this little guy. I love this one. You know, you could always compromise and breed them together. Dobra Wawa, you know what I mean? I've never seen a breed like this. Nor have I. I don't know what to make of it, frankly. It's unsettling. It's disturbing to look at it directly. How did this dog get past regions? That's what I want to know. I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Will you help these misunderstood animals? I don't like the fact that it's looking this way. I can't see. Don't come over! Save yourselves! So that's kind of like the beast being unleashed, isn't it? That's a little bit just like the beast being unleashed. But the Lord told me to pay attention to the license plate on that thing. And it's 2NRA294. And let me show you what that is. Because I know how they speak. Just like in the movie Arrival, she understands their language. I'm going to show you their language. Here's their language. Ready? R-A or let's see. Hang on. Uh, like when their God gets set loose on uh, everybody, Ra, R-A, R is 18, A is 1, R-A, 181, right here, Adobe or Wawa, what is it? Oh my God, it's the same thing, disturbance, upheaval, revolution, almost anarchy, first in the political and then it's the moral sphere, tumult, upheaval, see it right there, wow, that's the exact same thing as the cost of the painting i was like that is really weird it gets better you want to see better well that morning i had four computers that just got out of the shop and that very same morning i opened up one of those computers and i thought he had wiped all the files off it and i clicked on one of the folders and there were some photos i haven't seen in a long time and i went wow i haven't seen those pictures and I clicked on one of them, and it was a serpent coming out of the eye of a skull, and it said, Locals Only, 1999. Locals Only, 1999. Let me show that to you. Locals Only, 1999. Now, the, now what are the odds that that painting is 2350 and it means upheaval. What are the odds the Adobe Wawa commercial is Ra, which is their God, and it means upheaval because the beast is breaking free. What are the odds that it has locals only black shirt? You know who the locals are? I do, it's a serpent race. See, because they set a trap, the host body for God's angels. And I'm the guy that would watch out for the sheep and keep them away from the serpents that are trying to deceive them and going against the word of God and swearing that God is the one showing them to him. Balderdash. You see it? Locals only? What is it? Let's see. It's a snake coming out the eye again. There's that old pesky serpent dealing with our eye again. You know, like Gene Rebel's channel with the spike in the eye, same as the serpent queen. So there is the snake coming out the eye and it says locals only and it says 1999. And the Lord said, Jonathan, look up 1999 because they're conveying a message. They do it all the time because I see these guys and they do it all the time. 1999, it means a banding together concourse upheaval. <laughs> a gathering. Let me get a cleaner image of it. Ready? What does it say? A gathering 
concourse tumult conspiracy because there was a conspiracy by a serpent race to take us angels down. Get it? That's why it's like, oh, locals only. Ha, 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 ha. So the serpent race, they think they're real funny. See? Tumult, conspiracy, gathering, a hostile banding together. Look at this. A hostile banding together or concourse to excite a riotous gathering. People make a mob. Upheaval again? One, two, three upheavals in the same day? What? <laughs> it gets even better. <laughs> it's even better. I was like, okay, that's insane. Three upheavals in the same day. 2350, the cost of the painting. Then the Lord said, remember the Adobe Wawa commercial? I'm like, yeah. And then, what is it? There's an upheaval. The beast is broken free. Ra 181. Upheaval. Oh, wow. I just grabbed that t-shirt the same morning to put it on my desktop. So I saved that photo because I haven't seen it in a long time. And it's a serpent coming up the eye. And it says locals only. And it also is upheaval. <laughs> okay. What's going on over James's channel? An upheaval. All the haters are all gathering. They're all like gathering together. Oh, we hate Johnny. Jonathan Cluck. Oh, see, we love God. We don't have anything against Jonathan. Oh, no. He's a false prophet and should burn in hell. Well, I love him. He's, I really, it's like y'all are so fake. Y'all are so phony. You're such cornballs. That's so fake. Uh-huh. Here we go. And I'm, I'm just letting you have it. Now, here's what's really crazy. Ready? The name of the painting is called Procession. In front of the witnesses, Lord told me, look up. Ready? He told me to have Siri do it. Siri, what's the meaning of the word procession? Which word? P -R -E -C. Proce procession means a number of people or vehicles moving forward in an orderly fashion especially as part of a ceremony or festival. Do you want to hear the remaining one? Yes. It means the emanation of the Holy Spirit. Wow, I wonder what the odds are that while I'm sitting there doing the saber thing with James, who's slaughtering the word of God, he's just destroying it. He's just pissing on it, saying that God pro is showing it to him and he's promising over and over again. The word of God says if you promise, you take an oath, and you're saying that God's showing it to you, that's Satan. That's what the Bible says. But he continues. And so the Lord told me, stand up. Make sure you do it. Okay, so here we go again. So the word procession, P-R-O, a number of people or vehicles moving forward in an orderly fashion, as part of a ceremony. Huh. Do you want to hear the other word? The other definition? Yes, I do, Siri. Theology, the emanation of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at that painting one more time. Procession. What is it again? Now, don't forget, I'm the guy that the Lord God took to the desert to give two halves of the same rock. I'm the guy that had his whole family turn against him after I got converted and the Lord had put me on the rock. And one of the first scriptures he ever gave me as I was walking down the street, because I had no car anymore, my house had been taken, my cars had been taken, everything I had had been taken. And I looked over and I was going, Lord, what's going on? And he had me look over and see Psalm 27. And it said, when your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. Why don't you look at and listen to all of Psalm 27 right now? Wait on the Lord, I say, wait. <laughs> what are these people doing? Are they in an orderly procession? Well, yeah, that's the title of the painting, Procession. And they're going up to a cross on a rock, and there's light emanating from the cross, like emanation. The, or procession also means the emanation of the Holy Spirit. Then the Lord told me to look up the word emanation. I was like, okay, well, I, I know what it means, but Siri, what's the meaning of the word emanation? 
Emanation means an abstract but perceptible thing that issues or originates from a source. Say, so what's the meaning of the word emanation? Emanation means an abstract but perceptible thing that issues or originates from a source. So an abstract or a perceptible thing that originates from a source. Well, what source would that be? Well, the one I serve that's from the rock that died on a cross for me, that gave me the Holy Spirit and made me able to stand against all the wolves and all the haters and all those that breathe out cruelty. In every video that they do, they do some weird picture of me. That's sick and twisted. That's the serpent race. They're all hanging out together. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm a sheep. That's why people draw pictures of me with sheep. So if they hate me by default, wouldn't they be the serpent? It's a yes or no. So if they hate Jonathan and I'm a sheep, then they must be the serpent. Aren't I the guy that showed the world that the Vatican's a serpent eating a sheep? Aren't I the guy that showed everybody that Akhenaten and Nefertiti is really a serpent race killing a sheep race? Aren't I the guy that showed everybody that downtown Grand Junction, a guy hugging a girl is really a serpent killing a sheep? Aren't I the guy that showed even my own girlfriend, who was my wife at the time, gave me a card of a serpent eating a sheep and the same thing over and over and over again? Well, sure. Isn't it normal and natural that... The serpent race over there would be all pissed off because they're caught and they're about to be judged. I bet if I was them, I would be crapping in my pants right about now. I'd be terrified. Look at that. Go to the art gallery right now, Jonathan. Why? Trust me. Because there's a group of people leaving and going up to the rock, the cross. Jonathan, watch this movie, The Arrival. Why? Just trust me. Because you go inside and you're able to communicate with this being that's really like the clouds, because then it turns into the clouds and leaves. No. No, 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 no. That's not even possible. Let's talk about 320 and 322. I woke up from the noise. I was awakened. The Lord awakened me. And I went and turned off a light that was potentially going to cause a fire. And it was shining on my artwork. You know what it was shining on? Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven. Yeah, that's what it was shining on. Oh, like, okay. This is the artwork it's shining on. Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven to judge the serpent race. Yeah, that's what the light was shining on. And then the Lord said, document the time. Well, I said, well, Lord, I looked at the time. It was 3.20 when I woke up. And the Lord said, document it right now. And I did 3.22. What does 3.22 mean? To lift up on high for all to see, to uncover that which was hidden, which is what I'm doing right now. There's a serpent race. And they look like they're all gathering over behind James. Because James won't acquiesce, which is really bad. But James showed his real hand when he started saying, I promise, I promise. Oh, uh, listen to me. You must listen to me. No, James, I'm not going to listen to you because you're going to have people not be ready when it happens. And the Lord is giving me all these supernatural things to make sure you're ready. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, who gets to see some entity turn into a cloud and leave? <laughs> so crazy. I mean, who... Who's ever laid hands on someone that's terminally ill? I have. How many times? A uh, pretty good handful of times. Have I ever had anyone of those people that I laid hands on call me a false prophet only in Karen Sullivan? Let me ask you a question, Karen. Why didn't you heal yourself then? No, an honest question. How come you didn't just do it all yourself? If I had to show up, you're saying the devil showed up to heal you? <laughs> Okay. No, it's that you have stiffened your neck against God now. All of y'all have. Everyone that's over there has. And I'm warning you. The king is coming to judge all of us. But have you ever thought you were going to leave this place before all hell breaks loose? And the worst horror the world's ever seen. The greatest horror is at the door right now. And guess what? James is making people think 
that they shouldn't be waiting for Jesus. That's sick. James, I'm sorry, I love you in Christ, but you're wrong. Okay, now let's just see what all the data points to. What time did I actually wake up at? I, w I woke up at 3.20. You know what tw 3.20 means? Let me show you what it means. It means the end. See it right there? The end. So I was awakened at 3.20, and 3.20 means the end. And I screenshotted my phone at 3.22 because the Lord wanted me to see both. The end, and then 3.22 that I've shown everybody clearly that which was hidden. But it gets even better now. <laughs> it just gets even better and better. Y'all ready? Uh-huh. You see that dead scorpion right there? You see the scorpion is crushed? Did you know, after the Lord woke me up, the, the, that next morning, we went and did a little PT, a little physical training with the doggy and Corey and I and Zach out doing a nice long hike. Guys, I used to, like, go hunt scorpions and catch them. It's one of the things I used to do as a kid. If you turn over a rock, if you look on the underside of the rock, upside down, you'll find the scorpions. Sometimes they'll still be on the ground, but if you turn the rock over, they'll be there upside down, stuck to the rock. That's where you find scorpions if you're hunting them during the day. That's how I used to find them. They don't come out during the day very often. They're very nocturnal for hunting. Did you know when we did our walk, when we we're talking about James and all his nonsense, a scorpion ran right out in front of us and Zach just crushed it. <laughs> when was the last time you crushed a scorpion under your heel? Seriously. Here in San Antonio, the odds of walking down a path and crushing a scorpion are insanely small. To be able to walk down the path and crush one at the time when you're in a fight with a bunch of scorpions that are over backing James, <laughs> that's the Lord. <laughs> Doesn't the Bible say, I'll give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions? You know he's talking about the other race of beings, don't you? Now you want to hear something really crazy? <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Well, someone who has very serious scriptural acuity sent me an email. And she had posted a comment on one of my videos. And she had posted, I think, 2 Timothy 3.17. And she said... Jonathan, you really got to look at this. And you got to look at the word. Let's see. 2 Timothy 3, 17. There you go. She said, you got to look at the word thoroughly furnished because it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction and for instruction in righteousness. Not in unrighteousness as James is doing. Don't forget, James did a video where he said, the Lord God told him, if you're waiting and watching for him, you are tempting God. That's what he said. Then I challenged him on comments. He wrote comments that were directly against what I was asking him to do or read. Then he did a video where he said, okay, I did watch it, and it didn't sound right. Okay, you're right, I apologize. But then he reversed this whole thing and said, no, the Lord was actually telling just him, but we wouldn't know because it was just for him. No. But then he started taking O's. That's how you know for sure. Once he started taking those O's, that's it, done. You can't listen to James anymore. Because if you do, he's speaking the language of Satan. Because the Bible says in Matthew 5, any such conversation is of the evil one. That's what he did. But, so one of this person that posted a comment for me, they said, Jonathan, go look at this. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And when I went to look for it, I accidentally highlighted the word perfect because I wasn't really paying attention. 
And so I looked up the word perfect and it says by implication, complete, fresh. And then the Lord told me, pay attention. And I, I went there to 737 right here. See it? And it says through the idea of suspension, which means like, you know, suspending. And it says now, this day hints like right away. But I heard, look at 142, the root. And it says to take up, to take away, specifically to sail away. That is to weigh anchor. Well, that's weird because I had just watched the movie where those entities that were like ships, they all weigh anchor and they turn to clouds and they go away. <laughs> okay, ready? I was like, well, wow, that's super cool. And I said, thank you. Look at what it says. But then I was like, wait a minute. I looked up the wrong word. I looked up the word perfect. And she was showing me thoroughly furnished. And I clicked on thir thoroughly furnished. And look what it says. To be out of time. To be out, to finish out time. And I clicked on the root of it, though. I clicked on the root of it, and it said, to complete, just like perfect. And then I looked at the root of that, and it said the same exact thing, and it had the exact same root. To take up or away, specifically to sail away, to expiate sin, to bear up, lift up, to take away and up. So I ask everybody that's watched this video, do you think the Lord God is communicating with me, telling you to get ready? It may be time that you start looking up. Yes or no? Or do you think James and all the serpents are right? <laughs> Whatever. Pick your side. Pick one. Okay. I choose the Lord God. I chose him back in 2002. He made me a servant. He's done so many supernatural miracles. I don't have to sit here and promise everybody that God is speaking to me. The record bears witness itself. The time looks like it's very close. He walked me into an art gallery again. That's the third time. Into an art gallery. And there's a line of Christians going up to a rock with an emanation coming from a cross. <laughs> Wait! He had me click on some movie called The Arrival and some girl has the ability to communicate with an entity that opens a door in time. And it turns to a cloud and leaves. <laughs> he woke me up from a dream. He woke me up at 3.20 from a noise. Told me to make sure I looked at my clock it was 322, but I woke up at 320. 320 means the end. Do you understand? <laughs> I know, hopefully, I'm really fired up. Hopefully, I've made this to where you guys can understand. Maybe I'll do try and do it again and do it a little more calmly, but I am freaking out. There's a tumult going on over there. James, a planner. James, I love you in Christ. I tried. But you have gathered the serpents and the scorpions behind you. And they're all over there. Oh, you're so wonderful, James. Oh, they're not even using scripture to show you your error. Well, that's what a serpent race would do. Oh, you're doing so great. You're doing great. Go get him, James. We all hate Jonathan. He's a false prophet. He laid hands on me and I'm well. I hate him. No, I called you out for taking a bunch of people's money that we had given you for handicapped people and people that didn't have anywhere to go. And then when you were called out, you kicked everybody out and I helped to stop everybody from suing you and your mom. That's what I did. And you, Karen and Kathy, all you did was go out and call me a false prophet and malign me. And anyone that stands with you, stands with you. You've already said, I stand against Jonathan Clack. You've already said, Jonathan Clack is a false prophet. Amen. And if, if, if that works out for you, great. But 
if everything I've shown you about the Vatican being a snake is true, if people are drawing pictures of me and putting dead sheep and I'm able to catch them, that means I'm just catching that dirty little serpent race and catching them for what they are. And then they should know this, the time of their destruction, the serpent race destruction has come. So there it is. Now I've done my job. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Yeah, baby. <laughs> so, and here's the other thing. I honestly do love you in Christ. I do. I mean that. I'm not, I feel sorry for the people that hate me. I get tired of, they're like, it's like a bunch of chickens pecking you in the head. It's like, stop already. But you know what? It's just a joke. It's a joke. Y'all's behavior is a joke. Anyway, time will tell, won't it? I wouldn't sit there and pontificate how great you feel, though. I want to do that. I love you in Christ. Peace and grace. Thanks for letting me vent. I needed to get that out. Because this kind of stuff, it's not good for people. It's not. Going out and telling people they shouldn't be waiting for Jesus, that's sick. People have been waiting for Jesus since he came the first time. And it says, ye men of Galilee, why stare you up into the heavens? The same Jesus that you saw depart shall return in like manner. Okay, so enough with the telling people Jesus isn't coming. Now, for all the people over here with the Johnny Click crowd, thank you for coming. Here's a hug. Now, Gene, I'm going to give you a hug, but you guys just, you know, hands up here. <laughs> Go take my posters down, Gene. <laughs> Okay, Karen and Kathy, I love you guys. I'm sorry for you. I mean that. I love you in Christ. Okay, but stop being so damn mean. Y'all are freaking mean. Y'all are mean. Y'all are cruel and mean. Stop it. Jim, quit appointing yourself like you know anything. It's embarrassing. There's your hug. <laughs> okay. Now, everybody go to their corners and let's wait things out, okay, and see what happens. So maybe, you know, maybe you'll have a nice long time here and you can sit there and make fun of me and you can say, oh, see, Glenn, you're a liar. You were wrong. Well, that's Y'all haven't taken a break for over a year with your hatred. Have you noticed? The Lord told me to ignore you. Who's behaving like a Christian? Who? Okay, well, I think the Lord took the, the leash off me a little bit tonight. Because enough's enough, guys. Seriously, and you're welcome that I stood in the gap for you guys. I did. A lot of people wanted to come see you guys. I was like, nope, no one's going to do it. I gave Chuck my word. Chuck, you gave me your word. No one would be out there running their mouth about me. You didn't keep your word. Anyway, I kept mine. All right. I love you guys in Christ. Now, let's see if everybody can just... I'll just go over there. We'll just go over there. We'll just wait and see what happens. Why don't we all do that? Okay? All right. I love you guys in Christ. You know, one thing I got to do is I forgot. I got to show you the name of the artist. <laughs> I'm sorry. Remember Melvin Warren? Chief Watchman? Yeah. Chief Watchman. The guy that would show everybody what The Rock was. Let me show you what the name of this guy is, the artist for this painting that's the procession. Francis B. Sun Smith. See it? Francis? You know what Francis means? Francis means a free man. <laughs> uh-huh. And you know what Smith means? Smith means to forge or fabricate, to design or fashion. And the Lord God formed Adam from the dust. A free man formed. And they're all going up to Christ on the rock, leaving? No, that's not possible. Sorry. Anyway, I love you in Christ. Thanks for letting me be so fired up because you know what?
<laughs> you know the ends here, right? Woo and the end for us is the beginning. But the end for the serpent race is not good. So don't be the serpent race when this all goes down. If you have a chance to repent, you should repent. If you don't, you got to write it out and see what happens. And I'm going to be praying for everybody. And I mean that. Sometimes I get kind of campy because, you know, like I said, the Lord told me to ignore Gene Rebel and Kathy and Karen and all of them. He told me that a long time ago. Just ignore them. Don't give them any no, never mind for anything. But he told me just recently, it's okay. You can go stand up. So I did. I'm tired of being maligned. It sucks. But Jesus said, Blessed are you when men speak all manner of evil about you for my name's sake. I'm the one showing everybody that sheep are being killed by serpents all over the place. So see, I'm speaking truth for El, the Almighty God, that his sheep are being destroyed by the serpent race. I can show it to you everywhere. No one can argue with it. But then there's someone else that's sitting there swearing. Well, when I say swearing, he's taking an oath promising that he's speaking for the Lord. He's not speaking for the Lord because you never promise and say you're speaking for the Lord ever. It says in scripture, not just uh, Matthew 5. It also says it in other scriptures as well. James chapter 5 as well. It says above all things, never take an oath. Never. Above all things. Okay. Anyway, I love you guys in Christ. Uh, serpents, have at it. <laughs> Go get them. Uh, sheep, be at peace. Be looking for Jesus. It's the time for the wheat and the weeds, guys. It's the separation. Can you feel it? Boy, oh boy. Anyway, I had to do a little addendum. I don't know if this part's going to turn out uh, as clean as the rest of the video. But I wanted to make sure y'all knew that the name of the artist was Francis. You know what? Let me show it to you. Francis Smith. To forge, fabricate, to form. That's what Smith means. And then watch this. Francis. I mean, what are the odds? Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. Look at this. <laughs> the meaning of the name Francis. Free man. <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh huh. Okay, so free man to forge, to form, to make. Okay, that's what the Lord did. He made us into free men. Okay. I love you guys in Christ. Now, I'm going to take a break. James, why did you take a break, dude? Love you in Christ. Just go be with the Lord and pray. Ask the Lord for forgiveness that you would lead sheep astray. Quit taking pats on the back from the serpents. It's not good. All right.